There are some techniques that you probably should master as a photographer in order to be able to fix problems that might come up. One of these techniques is to replace a sky, to take one sky shot, which is a really good sky shot from one photo, and just put it into another photo. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So I have found here, I've browsed the stock exchange, and I found two photos. I found one of a great sky here that I'd like to use, and one of a landscape, which I'd like to add this sky to. And to save a little time here, I've gone ahead and opened them up in all of their full glory here in Safari. So I'm going to copy this image and create a new file in Photoshop. It's going to automatically inherit the size, hit OK. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to just bump the size down to 1000 pixels wide. All right, so here we have the photo. So let's pull in the sky as well. So I'm going to copy that from Safari and paste it in here. Now, obviously, it's going to come in a little too high in resolution because we scaled this down. So before I fix that, I'm just going to merge down the layer here of the uh, main photo so it gets to be the background layer. And then I'm going to go into free transform mode, command T on the Mac, control T on the PC, on the clouds layer. And I'm just going to holding down my shift key, scale it down so it's proportionally and I'm going to make sure it fits across my entire image here. And let's move this up to a sort of a good point here. Okay, so this is what I'd like to replace the sky I have here. So what I'm going to do now is going to add my layer mask, choose my brush tool, maybe increase the size of the brush slightly here. There, that's it. And let's also select black as my foreground color, because when I paint on a mask with black, and let's by all means decrease the hardness here so we have a little softer brush, when I do paint with black on my mask, it's going to hide whatever on the layer that has the mask. So I'm going to go up and let's just do a very rough editing here. Let's switch using the X key back to white as my foreground and just go and paint back a little bit here. We can switch like this, black and white. Okay, so something like this, just quickly. So let's unlink the mask now. The little link icon right here in between, you can click on it to make it go away. And this means that I can move the image and have the mask stay in place. So in this case, I, I don't want to just make the top clouds here because this is going to look unrealistic. But on the other hand, I don't want the ground width. So I'm going to now that I know a little bit more about what I have to work with here, place the absolute bottom here. Absolute bottom on my image. So something like, just like this. Okay, so let's now go in, zoom in a little bit in the image, switch to my brush tool, shortcut code B on the keyboard, decrease the size of my brush, a big deal here. Now I mean a big deal. Set the hardness somewhere in the middle. And now let's go and using white as our foreground color, let's go here and paint this in. So I can maybe use a little less hardness to make a little glow. Now, since this is a video tutorial, I'm going to do this fairly quickly. So you need to spend more time because now I'm, sp I'm starting to spill over here. And you see here comes a tree from the other image. And I don't want that tree. So let's see here. We can fix that later. Now I'm sp starting to spill over here. And you notice that's probably when I need to move down the image just a tad. So I don't get the ground here. Okay, so back to the mask. Let's fix a couple of these areas. I don't want to go too far. Because now we need to fix it with white, painting the other direction. All right, so now I come to a bunch of trees here. Now, if I paint right over them, the trees are going to go away, and they I think they make a lovely part of the original photo, and I definitely want to keep them. So what I'm going to do is just paint near them, sort of like this, and using an even smaller brush, what I can do is come down here in between them, just a little bit. I'm just going to go as near as I can 
without actually touching them. So why not even smaller brush here? Let's go down in the middle. And this is the kind of fine tuning that you need to do. And uh, let's do the same here. Let's keep the hills. Because they're also a nice background area and background element to this. I don't know how visible they'll be, but at least it's something. Now let's finish off, increase the brush size a bit. We can just go up here. Whoops, proved to be longer than I thought, so let's just I'm just moving through quickly here. Alright. So now it's starting to look fairly good, and the trees here are still missing a little bit because they draw attention to them directly. But you know, one way to fix that is by just dropping the opacity a lot and just painting over them with that opacity. You need to do it, you need to do it sparingly. And I think this is probably too much. You need to go and really go in with a small pencil here and, and take that out. But this does color it a little bit. So it's one way to just start going about coloring the sky behind them just a tad more than it was originally. So here we've got an image that we can live with for now. So, just to recap, if I turn on the top layer, it has its original sky. And I'd like to retain a little bit of this evening color that's in the sky here. So, even though we don't really notice this light area, it doesn't come to us as natural that the new clouds doesn't have that light area. I still want to go into my adjustments layers here, and I want to add a photo filter. I'm going to add a warming filter, and let's see which warming filter. There are a couple of different. I think 81 here looks fairly good. I don't want to go too much too high. I don't want to go it to zero, but just adding a little bit of warmth into these clouds make them make you think that this is the evening type of shot that it actually is. So in our layers here, let's turn off the photo filter. And it looks like this, and on. Let's decrease it a little bit. It's fine-tuning this here, so I think something like this looks yes, looks fairly good. Preserves that evening light. And now it, as it affects the bottom part as well, what we need to do again, mask, adjustments layers comes with a mask, and all I can do is select a very large brush now, and using my black as a foreground color, I can just paint this out from the grass, making sure I've got 100 opacity, of course, it's going to go a little bit faster. So here we have the before and here we have the after. I think it's a big difference. All right, so the final thing that I'm going to do now is just add a vibrance adjustment. I'm just going to bring the vibrance down, which is basically the saturation here in the sky. Because the ground itself in the original starting point isn't that saturated. I'm going to desaturate just slightly the sky as well. And as before, a quick mask on the ground here ensures that it stays the same as before because we want to match the clouds with the ground. So here we have, I think, a very good starting point. So let's recap. We had the original layer and the original image, and we applied and we took a clouds layer and put it on top, which is looking nice. And then to make the clouds a little bit more realistic, we added a photo filter to warm this up. And finally, just desaturate them slightly. So we're, this looks now like this is a believable photo. The clouds here could have been there when we took this photo. So now you knew how to do simple cloud replacement for some shots that you really need clouds in, but they weren't there when you took the photo.